Daniel Daniel here to bring you the latest fantasy news. Yes, I got some sun, and I'm severely burnt and in pain. In the first bit of fantasy news, in light of the recent semi-controversial mermaid casting, there is now an online petition and movement to have Terry Crews cast. Terry Crews himself has jumped in on the movement and is actively pursuing the role. Good on you, Terry. I'd like to see you do it. With the upcoming Dune movie, there has been much speculation on who will be playing what exact role, with only a few of the castings actually been assigned to certain roles. Well, one more has been officially confirmed, with Dave Batista playing Raban Harkonnen. I personally was not a huge fan of the Dune books, as I've said in this channel many times, too many times, too, too many times. But I am very excited for this movie with the director attached, the talent involved. I don't see how it can go super wrong. And in the first news of the day that I am calling malarkey on, Todd Phillips says the Joker movie won't follow anything from the comic. I don't believe you. Well, Todd Phillips is a producer on the movie. Maybe he just doesn't know quite what he's talking about here and has not directly read many of the comics, but with the trailer being out, we already see direct references from multiple comic storylines. Maybe he's not saying any of these storylines will be exactly the same, but saying they're not pulling from them, even off just iconic imagery in the trailer alone. We can say that is not true. Even maybe it's vague references, that's still pulling from the comics. So I'm, I'm calling malarkey. I'm saying the guy spoke uh, maybe a little too certainly. Maybe he's saying they're not pulling storylines, but they're certainly pulling imagery already. You can't really do a comic book adaptation without pulling stuff. That's just how that works, man. And in adaptation quickie news, Witcher has officially found its composer for season one, one of which is a composer who has seemed acclaim in Russia, and the other is a YouTuber who has had much success composing soundtracks before. Honestly, both very impressive, and I'm excited to see their work because I just dig everything I've seen from The Witcher so far. I went from being skeptical about this show to really all about it. I'm in. Let's, let's, let's geralt it up in here, because I'm down. Everything has been so impressive, and Witcher is pretty much leading the charge for fantasy adaptations post Game of Thrones here, so they, they have a lot to live up to, and they're under pressure, because a lot of people are thinking right now, is there life to fantasy on television post Game of Thrones, or is that more of a fluke flash in the pan? No one will also be able to live up to it. And Witcher is in a position to continue that torch and keep it going. They are the ones who will be airing first in a big capacity that's so similar to the Game of Thrones setup. So, I don't know. I think they can do it. And I'm really excited to see how well The Witcher will be received when it's released. But in live action adaptation news, George R. R. Martin has dropped five facts, five fun facts about, about the upcoming Game of Thrones prequel. I will go ahead and link to it, but let's go ahead and go over the bullet points real quick. Westeros is divided into roughly 100 kingdoms in the prequel. There are Starks and Direwolves. I'm, that's my favorite fact right there. Dire wolves, I'm down. Give me puppers, please. There will not be any Lannisters, at least not at first. It's a true ensemble. The show might get a slightly different title than the one you are expecting. I've gone ahead and linked to all the articles I'll be talking about in the description down below. This is a news aggregate, not a news breaker. And while you're down there, you're coming through the articles, which ones you want to read. If you wouldn't mind hitting that like button, it would mean a lot. It really helped me out here. I appreciate y'all. And in Star Wars Disney news, because, oh, there's never a shortage of that, it appears that Mandalorian Season 2 has already begun some forms of production, at least according to Jon Favreau, who led Season 1 and seems to be leading Season 2. Disney, you have all the money in the world, but this show's first season has not aired yet. Disney is not the only production company to have done this recently. I do not understand it. Your show could fail entirely, and you're already investing resources into season two. My only guess is that they're doing this so they can have an incredibly fast turnaround and put out season two if season one's a hit while the pan is still hot. I get that, but it seems like a big risk, and with the amount of adaptations coming down the road, I, as a studio exec, would personally not be making this call, because if you have a hit, people are willing to wait around for it. People didn't forget about Game of Thrones between seasons one and two. And if you have a miss, it's better, in my opinion, to hedge your bets a little bit and just let it die and not have to cancel a production of a season two, you're sure is not gonna be profitable, which would be an expensive endeavor on its own. All of that being said, 
I am excited to check out The Mandalorian. I'd like to see what Star Wars can bring to TV in the live action, and the whole fact they're going for a Western vibe apparently fits for a Mandalorian story. In quickie news, the John Constantine character will be returning to the Sandman universe this fall, and New Line will be doing a Space Invaders movie. They're hitting the bottom of the barrel in terms of adaptations, in my opinion. Just, just throwing that out there. Oh, and on that same note, a beloved franchise, though, Cuphead will also be getting an animated series because, you know, what's not getting an animated series or some kind of adaptation at this point? And in progressive news, we're getting the first gay supervillain over at DC. And I know some people's reaction to this has been to call it homophobic to have a gay supervillain. I entirely disagree as someone with gay family members and many gay people close to him. I find equal representation regardless of sexuality to be true equality. So having gay not be a factor of hero or villain to me is a quality because someone can fall anywhere in that spectrum and gay does not equal great person, gay does not equal bad person. It's a sexuality, so DC making a more accurate move because people are good and bad regardless of who they are attracted to, regardless of what gender they are. That does not dictate who we are as people, so I find this just to be a good progressive move, equal representation everywhere. Woo! In streaming service news, which has become integrally tied to fantasy news recently, HBO is launching its direct Netflix competitor with HBO Max. And the reason I am covering this story is because I plan on starting to cover the streaming wars, which have kind of entered their zenith recently in an upcoming series on this channel. If you're interested in that, please hit subscribe because within the next week or two, I will be putting out the Streaming Wars Era 1. And in direct fantasy news, once again, we are having a Lord of the Rings MMORPG being developed. They have confirmed a few key things. It will be an MMO created by the Amazon Game Studio. But by that being said, it is being based off the books, not Peter Jackson's film trilogy. Many of the Lord of the Rings games we've gotten before have actually been based on the movie rather than the books, which its largest implication is probably the character models will look different and, you know, it'll it'll be very accurate and more magical and it's a free-to-play online MMORPG, so people will be happy about that. You want me to Twitch stream it? I'll Twitch stream it. Netflix's upcoming sci-fi movie Another Life starring Katie Zakoff is looking awesome, so if you're a sci-fi fan, maybe go check that one out. If you want me to, I'll do a review on this channel. I'm excited for it. And really, seeing Katie Zakoff back in space after the Battlestar Galactica reboot is just cool. I, I love her as an actress and I want to see her take on some big role again she's fantastic and go watch the remake of Battlestar Galactica if you haven't it's phenomenal I know it's like a meme show at this point but I think it's great and in a similar sci-fi vein a poster for the Picard movie has been posted neat I once again am very nervous about the upcoming Star Trek adaptations and I just I hope I hope they're more similar to the original shows and not this Star Trek Discovery thing that's not Star Trek Fight me. And in good job, meme lords, you actually did it. The Sonic redesign is apparently nearing completion, and they are confident fans will enjoy this one after the creepy, uncanny valley Sonic design that was put out before. That was... That was bad. And in the final bit of fantasy news today, and one that I find highly interesting, John Carpenter is going to be involved with a new Joker story, especially with his most recent adaptations. Seeing these two come together is very exciting for multiple reasons, although many people say John Carpenter's most creative years are behind him. I like to think there's still some life in the amazing creator. I loved so much of the guy's work from back in the 80s, and if there's one character I think may be able to reignite some really great ideas from the iconic movie creator, this might be one of them. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you think John Carpenter has what it takes at this point to craft a wonderful Joker story? Or are you tired at this point of the Joker character all together. I look forward to the discussion down below about this story as well as any of the stories we covered here today on Fantasy News. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here and look forward to the Streaming Wars coverage that will be on this channel in the future as well as a review of the first book in the Broken Empire later this week. Have a good one y'all. Peace! Special shout out to my two latest high tier Patreons. First name's really easy. David Goodwin. Thank you. Second name. We're still currently researching how to pronounce. Any any ideas? I have no idea. We're gonna go with Buvar Freurikisan Freur Freur Freurik Freurikistinian 
you go ahead and comment a phonetical pronunciation. I will redo this for you in the future. Sorry. Sorry, and hope you're having a great start to your week.